All right, let's talk about constipation. We need to have a serious talk. In all honesty, this is kind of a serious topic when it comes down to constipation because nobody ever talks about it and how it relates to ketosis. I see a lot of comments, a lot of emails come in, but there's not a lot of public facing content surrounding the world of what is happening to your digestion when you're in ketosis. And the simple fact, there's actually three things that you can start paying attention to that are going to make a big difference when it comes down to the ketogenic diet, how your body digests, and if you're constipated or not constipated. And I'm gonna break down these three things, but they're not what they seem like on the surface. Okay, the first one, we're talking about fiber. The second one, we're gonna be talking about dehydration. The third one, we're gonna be talking about minerals. Seems like very basic stuff, right? Well, when I dive into the science of it, you're gonna see that it's actually somewhat the opposite of what you might think. So let's start with fiber, because it's the one that we all think is really related when it comes down to constipation and whether things are moving or not. So we have to remember, when people are going to ketosis, most of the time, they're just by default subbing out their veggies and putting in a lot more fats and unfortunately putting in a lot more meats. And I'm gonna reiterate here that the true ketogenic diet does not contain a lot of meat, does not contain a lot of protein. It should be like 10 to 15% protein. So by and large, that's off kilter anyway, but let's not talk about that in this video. I'm just saying that most of the time people are subbing out their veggies for meats and fats. So we look at the breakdown of fibers and how they're digested in the body and we get a little bit of a clearer picture. You see, we have soluble fiber and we have insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber is the kind of fiber that's in stuff like oatmeal. And what soluble fiber is, is a fiber that draws in water. So when you're going to the bathroom and your stool is soft, it's because you have a good amount of soluble fiber. It's drawing water into the stool. It's making it easier to move the digestive system and it's making it easier for the body to process that waste. The problem is when we're in ketosis, it's very difficult for us to get good amounts of soluble fiber. Because soluble fiber, we're usually getting from starches. And since we're avoiding starches, we run into an issue. Now, there is another kind of fiber, it's called insoluble fiber. So insoluble fiber is still fiber that's still gonna help get things moving, but it doesn't retain water, it's just bulk. It just adds volume to the waste. So basically, it's the job of the insoluble fiber to push everything through, whereas the soluble fiber is actually there to make everything softer and easier to move. So you start doing the math. You look at ketosis, you look at all the veggies we're eating. We're eating tons of asparagus, we're eating tons of veggies that have a lot of insoluble fiber, but we don't have the soluble fiber. So what ends up happening? Well, we actually create ourselves a blockage with the insoluble fiber. So how do we start getting more soluble fiber into the mix? Well, there's a couple of different things that you can do, but one of the things that I like to do the most is get more avocado in the diet. Now, simply put, avocado contains a lot of soluble and insoluble fiber. In fact, in my opinion, it's probably one of the perfectly balanced ketogenic foods. It does have a couple of carbs in it, but you're getting the fats, you're also getting the insoluble fiber, and you're getting the soluble fiber that you need. So that's the simple trick that you can use there. But if you understand that you're really just not getting enough of the right kind of fiber, it makes it a little bit easier. Now I could also say that you may wanna to tone down some of the extra fibrous veggies that you're taking in, because believe it or not, too much fiber can cause a problem as well, especially when it's combined with a lot of fats. Okay, now when we look at the digestive piece, we also have to look at probiotics and prebiotics. Okay, probiotics are something that you add to the mix later on to add bacteria into your gut. Prebiotics are fertilizer for your existing gut bacteria. In fact, there was a study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition that took a look at combining prebiotics and probiotics. The prebiotic that they used in this case was a fructooligosaccharide, and they combined it with a probiotic. And what they found is that a prebiotic and a probiotic combined elicited a much more powerful effect when it came down to frequency of bowel movements and ease of bowel movements compared to just adding a prebiotic or just adding a probiotic. So what I ultimately mean by this is by combining prebiotic foods and probiotic foods, you can really help yourself out a lot. That means asparagus with sauerkraut or things like that. You're basically combining these foods or if you have to take a supplement, take a supplement. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Next one I wanna talk about is dehydration. Now, I've talked about it in other videos, when you're in a ketogenic state, your body is not holding on to a lot of water. For every one gram of carbohydrate you consume, you hold about 3.7 grams of water. So when carbohydrates are not present, do the math. You're really not getting a lot of water that's getting held onto. So that affects your digestion, but it's not as simple as you think. It's not just about the fact you don't have water so things don't move through your body. I mean, that's a very simple way of looking at it. But when it comes down to ketosis, we're talking about bile. We need bile to break down fats. And guess what? Bile is 75% water. So without that water, what happens to bile? It becomes more viscous, it doesn't move well, okay? It doesn't move through your intestinal tract and your intestinal tract can actually dry out where it's losing that motility. So then things aren't moving, not to mention you're not breaking down the fats very well. 
So in addition to not being able to go to the bathroom, you're really not getting the most out of the food that you're eating either. So dehydration plays a much bigger role. Now you can add more sodium to the mix to make sure that you hold on to a little bit more water. That'll make a big difference. But there's another part two to this that really comes into play. There's a second phase of digestion and absorption that happens in the colon. A lot of people don't realize that. We still reabsorb some nutrients, some minerals, and some water, even when it's in the colon. Now what happens when you're dehydrated is the body says, wait a minute, I'm gonna pull as much water from the colon as I possibly can to keep this body healthy. What does that mean? That means your colon dries out, it means your bile dries out even more, and you've just put yourself into this vicious circle where you're chronically dehydrated and you don't have enough bile to really break down all the fats that you're consuming on a ketogenic diet. So what the heck are you going to do? Well, that's where minerals come into play. I'm gonna talk about this third thing, because when you are in ketosis, you are deficient in many minerals. We need minerals, okay? It's so important for so many different functions of our body, enzymatic functions, electrical functions, all the things that make us tick, including digestion. So let's take a look at potassium for one second. Okay, potassium is gonna help a muscle contract. It's gonna help a muscle do its thing. And when we're talking about the digestive system, we're talking about something called peristalsis. This peristalsis is the actual contraction of the muscle tissue in our intestinal tract. If potassium is not present or we're depleted in it, how the heck can it actually move food through the digestive system? Okay, and then we have magnesium that comes into play. Magnesium relaxes muscle tissue. So we need magnesium in the intestinal tract to relax the muscle tissue and quite honestly, if I can be blunt, relax the rectum enough so that you can actually go to the bathroom. If you don't have those minerals, what the heck's gonna happen? Well, not only are you dehydrated, now you don't have the minerals to electrically function your digestive system. So the best way that you can fix both of these problems is by adding a quarter teaspoon of Himalayan salt to your gallon jug of water that you're sipping on throughout the course of the day, remain hydrated, add a little bit of sodium so your body is making sure that it gets that in the picture. And also, don't be afraid of salt. I've talked about this in so many videos. Salt is not the enemy when you're in ketosis, as long as it's the right salt, not unopposed sodium from things like iodized salt. Now, I know that this video touched on a few different things and I hope that you got some good information from it. But as always, I wanna make sure that you let me know if you like this content and what other videos you might wanna see in the near future. Because I know I like to take out some of these subjects that people don't usually talk about and break them down. But sometimes there's even obvious ones that I don't know about. So make sure you present them down below so that I can see them. Keep it locked in and I'll see you in the next video.